If you're gonna cook a leg of lamb, it's probably because you wanna have a feast, you wanna invite a bunch of friends over, and you wanna show them something amazing. Leg of lamb can be a little bit tricky. If you overcook it, it can be very dry. If you undercook it, it can be very tough and chewy. And then also, you're probably wondering, what's up with the gaminess? Well, today, we're gonna show you how to perfectly cook it, some butchering tricks to make it more tender, and we're also gonna show you how to control the lamb flavor if you want more lamb flavor, less lamb flavor. So when you go to your butcher, you're gonna to wanna to ask for a full leg. The reason why I recommend buying a whole one is I'm willing to bet that you're gonna find it's cheaper than just buying the small piece. All the way around here. You've got a little piece of your hip bone here. You can see that's wanting to come apart. You just wanna use the edge of your table get in here and start cutting. Let's give them a flip. So we have our leg of lamb. Maybe you just bought this piece. That's totally fine too. You don't have to buy the whole one. I'm gonna go about three, four inches down. Once this thing cooks, this is just gonna slide right off. Last part, scoring. Scoring does two things. It creates little canals for you to rub little spices and salt in there so you get a lot more flavor that way. The other thing is it ends up breaking up this tough exterior into something that's a little nicer to eat. So we've got our lamb ready to cook. We're gonna talk about one thing which is controlling the flavor before we start cooking it. Unlike beef which has lots of saturated fats, lamb is full of unsaturated fats. And what that means is the fat is delicate and it's prone to oxidizing. When it oxidizes, it starts to develop lots of strong flavors, like lamby gamey flavors. If you want to tone that down, you add things like rosemary, mustard, vinegar, those are antioxidants, and they're gonna restrict the fat from oxidizing, or at least slow it down. So, we have a mixture of mustard powder, black pepper, and salt. We're gonna rub that into the lamb, we're gonna pop it into a baggie, and we're gonna cook it sous vide. I know you're probably thinking, that looks like a lot of mustard. Here's the thing. You're gonna use this mustard for a little bit for flavor, but mostly as an antioxidant to tone down the lamb. And since we're cooking this lamb for such a long time, the temperature and time involved with the cooking is actually gonna break down the enzymes in the mustard and make them very mellow. Right now, if you try it, it's gonna be very spicy. But tomorrow, after it's cooked, very, very mellow. Water bath over here. We got Jewel cooking away. All right, through the magic of cinema, it's 24 hours later. This lamb is done, perfectly cooked. We are going to make a beautiful glassy herb crust to go with it. We're up to 300, and here we go. Let's so start it. Okay, they got the oil coming out of them. We're looking good. Mustard seeds, by frying them, they get very crispy, and they become very mellow in flavor, too. So, I'm gonna get the lamb ready to pop in the oven so we get a nice deep crust. This isn't gonna look sexy, but it's gonna be good. All right, remember when we Frenched him? We sliced around the bone? Check this out. Whoop. Before I finish the lamb, all these bag juices. We need a better name than bag juices for them, but they're juices from the bag. So this guy's basically ready for the oven. One thing we're gonna do though, so we don't have a soggy bottom, we get crust all around it, we're gonna lift it up. Going in the oven. All right, baby. 
Boom. Hot, 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 hot. Hot lamb. 